Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the great prayer and psalm book of the Bible, the Psalms. Today we turn to Psalm 34 on this, our 34th devotional. As we do so, we approach the Psalms with three key interpretations. One, the Psalms are given by God to us that we might make them our own and pray them back to Him. Secondly, the Psalms teach us how to pray. And thirdly, every Psalm points us to Jesus Christ. I believe we find all of that today as we turn to this Psalm 34. If you'll look with me in your Bibles at Psalm 34, you will find a, a particular inscription that instructs us about the context of, of how it was that David came to pray this prayer. In my Bible, it says, Psalm 34 of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, so that he drove him out and he went away. And it's an odd inscription, right? It refers us back to 1 Samuel chapter 21. There, David is in the camp of the Philistines, but he realizes they shouldn't be there that he has fled King Saul. This is before David becomes king himself. So after fleeing King Saul, there's a lot of history here and backstory. He ends up in the camp of the Philistines, Israel's enemy. But the Lord has put in his heart that that's not where God wants him to be. And so in this very strange, unusual story in 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15, David then um, pretends that he has lost his mind. He acts like a madman in front of the Philistines. And they say, we don't have any business dealing with a person who has completely lost his mind, who is acting so crazy. And so they kick David out of the Philistine camp, which of course is just what he was hoping and wanting them to do. It's an odd story from David's life. But when he looks back on that event, he realizes that it was God who delivered him, that God put in David's mind this idea to pretend to act like he had lost his mind so that through that mechanism, he would be able to then to continue the course that God has set before him. And so Psalm 34 remembers this event. And so Psalm 34 first gives God, David gives God thanks for his deliverance, and secondly, David then wants to give a testimony about that, to tell others of this wonderful deliverance from God. And thirdly, then, from David's own witness and testimony, it is a time then that David can instruct all of those who pray Psalm 34 of how they too can and must live for God. So in other words, the psalm moves from, thank you, Lord, that you've delivered me, to thank you, Lord, that I can testify and tell others about this, to thank you, Lord, that we all can take away a deep teaching of how you would have us to live after this great deliverance. It really, to me, emphasizes the importance of testimonies, that we're trying to do that more, and I would love for us to do that more here in the congregation where I serve, of St. John Lutheran in Roanoke, Virginia, but, but historically, it's so important for believers to get up in the congregation and to give a testimony, not to build up their own reputation, not to put the spotlight on them, but to say to the congregation, look what God has done for me. Look how he has delivered and helped me. Let me testify to the greatness of God. And that then can teach those who listen to the testimony of how they then should live and how they can call upon the Lord themselves. So this psalm is quoted in that for that reason of instruction directly in the New Testament by the Apostle Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses um, 10 through 12, Peter quotes directly Psalm 34, verses 12 through 16. And so when Peter reads and prays Psalm 34, verses 12 through 16, he finds that instruction 
from King David in this psalm, worthy to pass on to the New Testament church. And so in 1 Peter 3, beginning with verse 8, Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for to you this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For, and here's the quote from Psalm 34, whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking dissent. deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. What is your testimony today? <clears throat> what might be a testimony <clears throat> of God's deliverance of you from, from a time of evil or, 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 or suffering or illness a deliverance, your salvation, what is a testimony that the Lord is asking you to give in the assembly of the believers soon and very soon? Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you be gracious to you. The Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Amen.